Hey everyone, uh, super excited to be here. My name is Trevor Heath. Uh, first off, thank you to Gatsby for giving me this opportunity to talk and kind of share my, my journey of, of growing with Gatsby. So before we begin, I'm gonna kind of set the stage for a little context. This is a bit of like a story or a journey um, from the first time I heard of Gatsby all the way through now and, and kind of my, my evolution of learning about the tool and uh, the way I use it and the way I think about it. So, so obviously my name is Trevor Heath. I'm, I'm the VP of product development for Novum. Uh, Novum's an agency. We work with a lot of different companies and startups to build platforms, headless e-commerce sites, custom software. Uh, these companies could be growing startups. They could be, you know, really brand new companies or even sometimes enterprise. Um, as, as the VP of product development, I don't really manage one sole product. What I do is I manage multiple products and projects for our clients and really work with them as kind of the, the strategy on both the product and the development um, you know, workflows that, that come with those projects. So obviously working with all of those, those different companies and getting a chance to, you know, be in unique industries and uh, uh, you have unique requirements. I, I do a lot of stack planning and comparing solutions and determining what's going to make sense for their needs. Um, this, some, this is something you may not get as much of if you, you know, work on the same uh, project or product over long periods of time. I've been lucky and, it's kind of one of the good things about being in that agency style uh, service is that you get to work with so many different people across so many so many uh, industries and you really get to think critically about their problems. So one thing I've learned is that process is really hard and every time is new and different, but every tool I can put into my tool belt really equips me to be better set for, for delivering a solution for the next person and working on something that you know I'm going to be proud of. So in this talk, my goal is really just to share that story, um, kind of share how it started with Gatsby, where I've gone over some projects that I've worked on, and how each of those projects kind of gave me a little bit clearer idea and a little deeper dive into what Gatsby has to offer from uh, you know a feature standpoint as well as just from you know, its capabilities and what it what it really fits with. And, and I think by the end, you'll be a little surprised about some of the ways that I think about trying to use it. So I assume that process is relatable uh, to many of you. You're probably on that journey with, with Gatsby as well as other tools. Um, so at some point in this, I may be at a point where you're like, yeah, that's about where I know. And then hopefully what I, what I continue on with can help you uh, onto your next, uh, journeys and ventures and 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 uh, attempts at using Gatsby to to produce a, a great beautiful product. So uh, here's really the last five years. Uh, so let's travel back to 2016. So 2016 Gatsby was young. This was uh, probably the first talk that I had seen. I was really involved with GraphQL, Apollo, uh, React and, and building a lot of platforms back then. Um, static sites were, you know, something that were being brought from the dead, it seemed like, and being brought back to, you know, power, you know, landing page experiences and other things. But I hadn't really played with it too much. I was mainly focused on like dynamic data and platforms. So I was at Apollo. Uh, and I also remember seeing this talk and kind of getting an idea of what Gatsby uh, was and and at that time it was really young and Kyle uh, was obviously really excited about it then and I'm sure he's continued to be excited as it's grown. So let's start with like kind of from that time a little scorecard and this scorecard will follow me throughout the presentation so that we kind of get a feel of like what are the things I've learned at that point what is my evaluation and then some ar arbitrary point system where the points don't really matter but um, at least they're there. So we get a little idea of out of a hundred scale, where do I kind of feel like I was with Gatsby as a, uh, as a tool in my tool belt. So at this point, I was a little confused. Like I had an understanding that it was good for static sites. It was a static site generator of some sort. 
Um, I think some people nowadays still think of it that way and really not much more, but that's kind of where I was. It was a cool tool. I was interested in it, but I didn't really have a fit for it uh, with the things I was working at. At least I didn't realize that. And uh, it was kind of the same as with many tools and services you learn about, all the ones you read on Product Hunt that are released every day, is maybe I'll try it on the next one. Maybe I'll, you know, give it a shot, but I'm not really sure where I'm, when I'm going to use it. I actually remember going to a comp, one of the Apollo conferences and asking the Gatsby table, like, when should I use this? When is a good? It was that limited of an understanding. But... Let's get on to the first kind of dabble in Gatsby when I was really introduced. And I was very lucky because we were really, uh, you know, we were kind of good friends with with the Prisma team. Prisma is a wonderful service. I highly recommend checking it out. But they, they provide some awesome database level kind of ORM type of experiences for, you know, for developers. And we used Prisma on quite a few projects. And we kind of... Uh, Gained some, I guess they trusted us enough to bring us in to help them build out some new pages and features on their site. And this was obviously, if you see the date, that video I showed that I first see, saw, I believe was in like 2016, 17. It, it took a while before I really got a chance to play with Gatsby. And this was that chance. Um, we were brought into the project. It was already established. The code base was there. And really, they just needed some stuff added to it and some features and additions, um, but it was a good start. So on this project, the requirements were pretty straightforward. Wanted to be flexible and fast um, performance wise. Uh, the content on the pages and in the docs and the blogs were all markdown driven. And, and kind of a unique thing was, you know, the idea of embedding React components into that markdown, which I'm sure many of you read through these requirements, you'd say, oh yeah, Gatsby's great for all of those. Strong SEO, obviously, you know, the static piece of this was, was a big deal. So obviously a lot of these decisions were made for us when we, we got to work on this project, which really helped us understand uh, how, how people use Gatsby, but pretty simple, React and Gatsby, flexible and fast, uh, Gatsby Markdown, uh, having Markdown generate out the pages in that jam style uh, uh, workflow was, it was really cool and awesome to see. Um, inline React components, we were using Gatsby plugin MDX. I think it was pretty early in the days of that. And it was this, you know, this chance to write those components directly into the markdown and, and see them render and have functionality and be able to click and change them and customize them. It was really a cool thing to, to, to finally use and see. And then lastly, strong SEO, I think, pretty straightforward, like Gatsby's statically generating the, building those pages out, using the front matter and the markdown to be able to create, you know, the SEO information that we need, and then plugging that into something like React Helmet to uh, put those HTML tags in the top. So really the core, most basic understanding of Gatsby was starting to form. Um, some of the, the overall arching concepts, I got to understand the config and like how you can, you know, put plugins in there and, and manipulate the type of functionality that Gatsby is going to provide you as you build. Uh, and then the build, I call it the build because I think the build is a really, uh, uh, important part of Gatsby. And it's a part that's kind of misunderstood. And I didn't know a lot about it when I started. I just saw a bunch of lines go and times and I'm like, oh no, there's an error. And now I'm like struggling to figure out how to solve that error. I think everyone's kind of, you know, uh, gone through that process. But as you start to realize what it's doing, you start to understand the flow. You start to open up possibilities, which we'll talk about. Um, the plugin libraries, like who doesn't like plugins? Plug stuff in and get functionality. It was really awesome to learn and see how that worked. The markdown and the MDX, lastly, like to be able to generate pages by just putting in markdown and being able to plug React components in, it was really a cool experience that really gave me that feeling like, yes, Gatsby, I want to use Gatsby on my next you know, project that's similar. Overall evaluation, it was just React and GraphQL for the most part with a little bit of extra stuff that you had to kind of get a feel for. But like when you're building it, it's pretty simple and straightforward if you have a basic understanding of those two. I think thinking statically as opposed to dynamically with the 
you know, client side data fetching, the single page applications that I was building a lot was different. I had to think about the data's coming prior to the site being loaded. This is in the build. And how do you take that data and use it without being able to have users kind of interact with you and tell you what data they wanted? And then also just overall, I love the plugins, like being able to go, oh, I really want this functionality or this integration, is there a plugin? Yes, there's a plugin, perfect. So I think all of these pieces really gave me that push forward to move forward with Gatsby and try it out. So later that year, after realizing that our site at Novum um, was pretty embarrassing that we were still relying on something like Webflow to build our site, it was simple. We were so busy building applications and other things, like we never really took the time to build out our own thing. And I think after working on the Prisma, it was like a no brainer. How do we bring what they've done to our website and give us that speed, that SEO ability, that, you know, really customizable, flexible, but super performance site. And I think that really got us there was, was working on that. So we decided to. Um, so so in the, not only with the requirements that I listed with the Prisma one, we followed it pretty much to a T with this. We also decided we wanted a few extra things to dive farther into Gatsby. One of them being, how could we share configuration of our theme, our brand, our uh, kind of foundational core functionalities across multiple sites. We didn't want to just build a landing page. We also wanted to build, you'll see the Novum Wills. We wanted to build an internal documentation site. We wanted to build a blog. We wanted to also build uh, a client portal, which actually required some sort of authentication. And then obviously we needed people to be able to contact us. We didn't get to do any of that in the Prisma site. How do we get people to, you know, submit information and get to us because how else are we going to be able to uh, get leads and, and, and work on new projects? So these are some of our new requirements. And, and if you take a look, we the first one it was Gatsby related was how we solved that. The other two were kind of more about learning how Gatsby interacts with other products and services. For the first one, we used Gatsby themes, which I think can be a little confusing sometimes. But the idea of a theme was the idea of a plugin which you can read more about this. I won't go too in depth, I'll go in a little bit, but you have a plugin with a preset Gatsby config, which meant all of our different sites, our website, our blog, our internal wiki, even our uh, customer portal could have a uh, core configuration and components shared across them. And they could all kind of live separately and be worked on by different people. But all of those core pieces were still shared and didn't have to be rewritten or, you know, shared in some, with some other uh, convention. We could do it all with Gatsby's uh, themes. Next was Netlify. We relied on for the hosting. We were able to use their functions to, um, you know, uh, do some quick server code to send form submissions and, and manage things. And that was really cool to, to work with them together. And then auth, we were able to use Netlify identity to, to uh, have that portal live on top of to basically protect the static content that we were delivering. So concepts learned, themes, obviously, the one I just talked about. Also the Gatsby plus Netlify thing. I think that's a core concept that a lot of people have probably had to learn or continued to learn. But I think the idea was these tools work together pretty seamlessly. There's plugins that help you. And it was really, really straightforward. I think from an evaluation standpoint, I started to realize, man, using things like themes and plugins really help you reuse that configuration, reuse UI components across sites, and kind of keep track of a complex um, suite of products. And I thought that was a really cool learning that Gatsby's not just for these single simple sites. You can use it to really build something much more advanced, much more complex using some of the more diff, uh, advanced tools. Uh, integrations were seamless and then protecting content using something like Netlify Identity felt like a React application. In some cases, it actually was easier because there was plugins that could plug that that functionality right into your site and give you something almost right out of the box. So we're leveling up, our scores up to a 60, and uh, we're really, I'm feeling better about, about Gatsby. Uh, and then just really quick with the, the themes thing, I think it's really interesting. I wrote a blog on this, I can share it in the chat. 
But here's just a quick diagram of how we used it. We have you know, the sites we deployed at the bottom and those blocks with colors are all the different themes we were using with pre-configured uh, uh, configs that could deliver things like authentication. We could plug it into our documentation as well as our client portal and reuse that code. Or our base theme had many of our core UI and styling. We could reuse that across our sites. It was a really nice way to keep these all separate, but also make it you know, simple and organized to, to uh, maintain. So we're, we're leveling up. Our Infinity Stones are starting to pop into our Gatsby gauntlet, and uh, we're growing. Our knowledge is growing, and we're feeling more advanced. So on to a more recent project that was, you know, really one of our most advanced forays into Gatsby, really got us to learn a lot about the core inner workings of Gatsby and playing with different features, things that you may not get to unless you're, you know, diving deep into uh, more complex data sets and more complex integrations. So Jackson is an e-commerce site, um, been a pleasure to work on with a good friend of mine who grew this business. And um, he came to us off of a Shopify theme. It was not performing well. He wanted to do A-B testing. He wanted to use new data and integrate it. And as you know, you know, with a Shopify liquid, it's just, it's a nightmare to be honest. And he was ready for something different. With the work we've been doing with Gatsby, it was like, well, maybe Gatsby is the right way to go here. We did some, some research, started to really dive into the world of headless. Um, we needed to find ways to, you know, integrate all that Shopify product information. Um, uh, Jackson's team also wanted to, you know, find better ways to manage product details. Like if anyone's familiar with, with Shopify, like Shopify is a little difficult sometimes to get some of that like really detailed nitty gritty product information. And with something like a jewelry site that Jackson is, there's so many variations and types and lengths and widths and thicknesses that like you really need a way to, to, to manage that. Also, um, they wanted to integrate some custom data sources like Trustpilot, where companies like this really, it's critical to have reviews on your site from a place like Trustpilot. And how could we get that into the site in a performant way? They have tens of thousands of reviews. Um, we needed builds to be performant and hosting to be fast. Like uh, a site like this was extremely image heavy, many, many pages, many more than a standard landing page. You have you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages of products, every page having multiple images. There's a real importance to being able to build something quickly. So when there's a new change, it's not taking forever to get that change out to the to the uh, customers and, and the users. And then lastly, was a thing that we hadn't really played with much on Gatsby was the idea of like, you know, hydrating the, the client with additional data on load through client side you know, fetching or querying of, you know, maybe a, uh, your own API, or in this case, the storefront API through Shopify, because we need to make sure discounts are up to date. We need to make sure that inventory is available when they're looking at the product. If you're, if you're building that and relying on the built data, that data can get stale. So there's some pieces to an e-commerce site that still requires that um, client side data fetching. So what were those solutions? So the headless CMS integration, um, we went with the Gatsby source contentful. It's been pretty enjoyable. And, and this was really different than Markdown because it was giving the power now to uh, marketing people, to content people. They didn't have to live in the Markdown world. They could live on that headless CMS. We pulled the data in and we, we in the same way we did it with the Markdown, we're able to generate those pages. We use the Gatsby Source Shopify, which I'm very excited. There's a new one and I can't wait to start using it. Just in my busy schedule, have not had a chance, but it's a place that I want to uh, get to soon and start to play with. I'm excited. We, we also did some really interesting stuff with Google Spreadsheets, uh, Gatsby Source Google Spreadsheets, where we're actually managing a lot of product information, variant sizes, thicknesses in a Google Sheet, and then kind of stitching that data into our, our GraphQL layer with Gatsby to now not only get all the Shopify information, but keep very specific, uh, you know, 
information about, about every product and variant in a completely different data source. And they all kind of work seamlessly together. And I'll talk about that a little more. And then lastly, we got to uh, build a custom plugin because we found that the Trustpilot plugin that was available wasn't quite what we needed. So we really dove into the the concepts of building a custom plugin and being able to get those nodes, create create new Gatsby nodes, and then use that data throughout the site. So now we're going a little deeper and deeper into you know, the Gatsby verse. Uh, lastly, for the builds that were had to be performing and hosting fast, perfect timing when Gatsby Cloud was available uh, for us on this project, we were able to switch over to it for both the builds and the hosting. And I can say to this point, it's been a really awesome experience. And it's just another evolution of Gatsby's ecosystem that brings it more and more to a simple, central, you know, seamless place. Um, and then lastly, for the client side hydration of like product information, so like whether products are available, using Apollo client is a was a way that we could, you know, make calls to the storefront API for a certain product. And I think we'll talk even more about this because I think this is what's leading me to the next places I want to go potentially with Gatsby and the place I already started to. So if we look at Jackson's application, I think this is a more advanced Gatsby application. We have that Gatsby build process in the middle. That's going to spit out our client when we, we go to serve that currently hosted on Gatsby Cloud. The build is actually, in our case, also done on Gatsby Cloud. And that is just, it's been such a smooth experience to be able to build those things on the cloud, host them right there, and be able to perform so admirably to millions of users a month in which Gat Jackson has. From the, from the top, we're looking at all of the different data sources, and this isn't all of them, but it's really the core ones of the Shopify storefront bringing in product data into the build. We have the contentful information about all the pages going into the build. We have the, the Google Sheets information for that Shopify products, additional details in there. And then we have that custom Trustpilot plugin, all kind of bringing that data together. And what's really unique is using something like Create Resolvers to make to make all that data so accessible throughout your application. And I'm not going to go deep into that advanced, more advanced feature, but I will say that every one of those evolutions of Gatsby brings on more and more functionality that really helps you, uh, you know, uh, handle these complex data sets and then use them creatively in your project so that it's seamless and easy. And then lastly, We'll look at the live product data on the bottom left, but that's just being able to now, you know, hydrate from that same source that's used in the build, the Shopify storefront, also on the client. So now that some of that data becomes available to you in real time as the users using your application or your site, as well as statically through the Gatsby build process. So overall, after this project, I'd say skilled up to a 90 out of 100. The new concepts, CMS integration, the plugins, the create resolvers to stitch this data together, the custom plugin building, then the using Gatsby Cloud to host and build the application all the way through the whole entire flow from creating, building, all the way to hosting. It's been, you know, the, the concepts kept adding on. Now we're the Apollo integration to be able to get that live data and starting to think about you know hybrid applications and how static and dynamic data can work together. Which in the in the evaluation you'll notice I started to realize you know the headless headless architecture really opens up the possibilities for not everyone needs to know MD or Markdown. They can start to you know create content easily using something like a CMS and then allow developers to display that, that content in beautiful ways. Um, the, the GraphQL layer really makes managing all of these data sources you see really simple because you can stitch them together and say uh, an item in Contemptful relates to an item in the Google Sheet and now that data can be shared across or the Google Sheet has, has product information that can be related to the Shopify da data and now Gatsby's helping you manage all this data across. And then lastly, the builds are faster and the hosting is fast on Gatsby Cloud. I think that was an evaluation that was quick, was like, man, Gatsby Cloud is really built for this. So it's it's a it's a really great solution to get you that full uh, spectrum 
of uh, of requirements on the on the site, and then um, and then lastly the hybrid experience, which we'll jump into in a, in a minute. So obviously over time, the list of things. Uh, the evaluation has grown and grown and grown, and I'm starting to get a really good feel of all the different ways that that uh, Gatsby can be used and be uh, leveraged to create beautiful experiences. I won't go through all of them, but we'll share it after, and you guys can can read through all of the all of those points of evaluation I've come up with. So, well, I guess with that, Gatsby's pretty much nailed down. Mm, maybe not. I think the hybrid app thing is something, it's the next frontier that I'd really love to explore. We'll, we'll hop back to the Jackson application and just really focus on that is this idea that your static data can kind of interact with the ability to gain, to fetch live data in real time. It's, it's such a unique uh, opportunity here to, to be able to bring performance sites alongside dynamic sites. So I'm going to bring you to kind of my baby, a project that I've I've been working on for some time. I've been lucky enough to work with some of the best fire departments and lifeguard agencies across the country to start bringing public safety data to end users in real time. And, and what that means is I there's a, a platform we've built that helps lifeguards like Huntington Beach's lifeguards collect safety information uh, along the beach using, you know, any device. That data becomes so valuable, knowing things like stingrays or how risky is a tower based on the wave activity or the rescue information. Well, guess what I decided here? I decided that I was going to try Gatsby for this. And it might be weird because a lot of this is dynamic data. It's in real time. You can't show stingrays after they happen. You need to show them when they're happening so people know. There's also a lot of information that is static on the site, though. So it made me think, well, how about all these FAQs? They're not going to change a lot. They're static. They're, they're, we want them to be performant. We don't need them changing a lot. How do we kind of bring those two things together? So what we do is we take the site and we look at it. All these pink boxes, these are all static pieces of information, layouts, text, descriptions, things that don't, don't change very often. You'd be likely to see these in a standard page query that you have in your Gatsby pages. This would be, you know, you have the name and the slug and the images and, and even the towers and where they're placed on the map could be static because those things just don't change. However, we can also pull in reference IDs that can then be used on the client to potentially pull in fresh live data in real time. You'll notice here we have an agency ID. We also have a tower ID for every tower. That data helps hydrate the application with all of this fresh content as the user is experiencing the platform. So behind the scenes, all those pink boxes, the layout and, and the basic information is all static, but those green boxes are refreshed with fresh data when the client is loaded. As you can see, it's as simple as grabbing the contentful information, passing that watchtower ID directly into something like an Apollo query. You'll notice the use query. And then having this really simple sync between that data that's stored in something like contentful or even markdown if you'd like, and then pull, pulling in dynamic information using a library like Apollo or Fetch or whatever it may be. It's, it's, it's opened my eyes to realize you can kind of have best of both worlds and really deliver products that are fast, performant, SEO uh, optimized and, and still provide really real time information to your end user. So what are some final thoughts as we finish up? Gatsby is not just a static site generator. That's something I learned as I started to move through the process. Like it's so much more than that. The advanced features help you manage like complex projects. And it's it's it really opens the door to building suites of projects across a company or across uh, uh, different domains and industries, even though it seems like it could it would just be used to, to prop up one landing page. With Gatsby Cloud, Building and hosting infrastructure is a breeze. I think that's something that's really 
been wonderful is you don't need to worry about the servers. You don't need to worry about builds being optimized. You, you can get that performance right out of the box. And now with Gatsby Functions, something I did not talk about, the server side code becomes more accessible. And I'm very excited to potentially use that on something like the weather data on this page. So with that said, there isn't a better time than now to consider Gatsby on your next project. I cross out static because I really believe there is some hybrid opportunities here. And honestly, at this point, when a new project comes in the door, there isn't a reason I'm not considering Gatsby to potentially be that solution. So thank you guys for listening. My name is Trevor Heath. I'm from Novum and uh, excited to hear your thoughts.